Hey, what's up everyone? This is Silver Slayer. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome. This is your last chance to enter my huge giveaway. It's going down tonight. You do not want to miss this. The winner is going to be a very lucky person. If you want to enter, click the link in the description or click the pinned comment on this video. I promise this is the craziest giveaway I've ever done. You do not want to miss this, so make sure you're a subscriber and make sure you go enter. With that said, let's jump into this video. So as gold, platinum, and palladium are in the red, silver's in the green, actually up 41% at $26.34. Look at the one-month chart for silver. It's definitely on a bullish streak. Now, heading into the new year, I am very confident in silver, and there's going to be a lot of, of reasons why. This video is going to explain some of the reasons. We have the first article talking about why silver has plenty of more room to run. And also why silver is set to blast off if this ratio breaks out. The gold to silver ratio is a great tool to see or to compare which metal is the better investment comparing gold and silver. So we have some goodies in this video. Make sure you smash the like button. Like I said, you've got to be a subscriber. If you want to enter my giveaway, the links to these two articles will be in the description. Let's jump into the first article. So silver continues to prove itself its use beyond just a currency or a safe haven investment. With new applications expected to see a tripling of demand in the next decade. That's a big number, tripling demand. I mean, silver's demand is going to keep going up, but the supply is diminishing. It's falling down. I just made a video yesterday how the Silver Institute uh, told us that silver's production is down. The supply is falling while the demand is skyrocketing so it is also starting to beat gold at its own game gold is a monetary metal specifically silver is a monetary metal and an industrial metal so things are definitely looking on the silver side the precious metal is slowly becoming better known for its antiviral properties and its usefulness in monitoring a person's vital signs as well as its importance in solar panels due to it having the highest electrical and thermal conductivity of all metals and light sensitivity. I mean, nothing performs like silver, nothing. And especially for as cheap as it is. Think about it. Gold is 70 times more expensive than silver is. So, and silver is used in a lot more in technology. So these companies, big business, they love silver. But predictions for silver's rise in value also lies in the increasing demand in the next generation 5G technology. Think about it. We're advancing technologically. We have 5G electric vehicles, the solar panel revolution with Joe Biden. Silver demand is only going to keep going up. According to Washington headquarter nonprofit in, in the, the industry body, Silver Institute, the electric components that enable 5G technology will rely strongly on silver to make the global 5G platform perform seamlessly. Right now, 5G related silver demand only amounts to about 7.5 million ounces given the industry is in its infancy, which is true. They're saying by um, 2026, it's going to be a lot higher. And by 2030, we're going to be in full fledged, five, uh, not only just 5G, but, but in that era of the next gen. But the Silver Institute estimates that with the ramp up, in the rollout of 5G in the coming years, the amount of silver required to climb to around 16 million ounces by 2025 and 23 million ounces by 2030. Wow, just what I just what I said. I haven't even read this article yet, and I'm, you know, it just shows that this stuff is definitely um, important information to know. That's more than three times the current demand. So if we look at the next five, ten years. Of where the, where the production is going to be, where silver production isn't very focused because it's not valuable. If miners want to keep getting a paycheck, they're going to look for gold. They're going to look for things to put money in their pocket. Why would you look for silver when silver is hard to find, especially with this pandemic? You have a limited staff. You have all these restrictions. So why would you look for silver if gold is 70 times more valuable well, from a one ounce to one ounce ratio. 
Silver is found by accident. They don't look for silver. If they find silver while they're looking for gold, they'll keep it, but they're not looking for it. So as comparison, silver's use in the once emerging photovoltaic industry stood at about 40 million ounces in 2010. And by 2018, it had reached 80.5 million ounces. And market watchers are extremely bullish on the outlook for silver. In its September Global Commodities Quarterly, City said it could see $40 silver and $52 an ounce within 6 to 12 months. And they actually said, yeah, right here, upside cases of even $100 an ounce based on technical analysis. At the moment, and that's a bank that said that, by the way. A bank, even Bank of America said high numbers like that. Banks are usually very bearish on silver, especially silver. Gold, sometimes they'll come out, but silver, it's not even a monetary metal to them. Banks own gold. America's the richest country in the world because we own the most gold. So for a bank to say silver, you know, to be bullish on silver is interesting. Times are changing and the cat's out of the bag. Silver is a good investment. Silver's also starting to outperform gold. Last Tuesday, silver price climbed 2% to $24.55, while gold only advanced 1.18%. And look at this chart right here, right? Gold's down 0.05%, silver's up 1.6%. It's like gold on steroids. So the first time, well, actually, okay. So the key trend that emerged during the only two times in history that silver has run hard, both following recessions. Think about it, 2008, 1980, 2020 or 2021 the first time the price went from sub so, you know sub five dollars was during the 1970s and fifty dollars an ounce in the 80s second time was ten dollars and then forty five dollars in 2011 what i was just talking about so this time nine dollars in march so where do you think it's gonna head over the next couple of years these short-term percentage gains at the time, far exceeded gold's gains during the same time frames. Add to that the fact that the gold to silver ratio continues to narrow and all signs point to a silver bull run. The gold to silver ratio is the number of ounces it takes to buy one ounce of gold. Any widening in the ratio above the long-term average of 63 is generally taken as a cue to buy silver as it begins to look cheap in relative terms of gold. That means right now silver is undervalued. So when we're looking at the gold to silver ratio, at 71, that means that silver is undervalued or gold is overvalued. As an investor, wouldn't you want to invest into the undervalued metal? That makes more sense. You don't want to buy something if it's overvalued. You want to invest into something that's undervalued because that means the value is going to rise. This ratio right here is going to decrease. And we actually saw it as high as 125 to 1 in March. So gold is silver. Silver has definitely been outperforming gold. So um, it, it's definitely something we've got to pay attention to. Think about it. Add to the fact gold to silver ratio continues to narrow and all signs point to a silver bull run. So any widening in the ratio above 63 is generally taken as a cue. So that means so right now even 71 to 1 shows that silver is still can still go lower, will still go lower or the ratio will climb lower or correct back towards more normal, equal levels. So silver is still going to outperform gold in the coming at least year or so. But then industrial applications used is also going to push silver higher. The dollar with stimulus, 900 billion stimulus, is going to also push silver. Silver set out to blast off if this ratio breaks out. Kind of comparing it to the last article. So leading, or precious metals are having a strong year in 2020, so, it's, so is it any surprise that silver has been the leading, leading gold higher? No. See, here's some of the key points. When the ratio broke out at each, which is on one, silver outperformed gold by a large percentage. Right here. The ratio is testing the top of its nine-year high falling channel at two, which is resistance currently. Or this is the resistance levels. If the ratio succeeds in breaking out, at two, look for the gold to silver ratio or silver to outperform gold again. And that's what happens every time. You can see the pattern. As I've said before, silver is too precious metals, what small cap stocks are to broad markets. It's always beneficial when they lead. In today's chart, you can see this plain and simple. We have a weekly chart of the silver gold ratio. 
And you can see how the ratio has surged higher this year with silver leading. Several times in the past, the ratio has been mirrored in a downtrend before breaking out at each point. The ratio is testing at the top of its current downtrend channel at two. If the ratio succeeds in breaking out, look for silver to confirm its leadership and role and underscore continued strength in the precious metals. So I, I, I can't see any reason why people or, or gold investors can, can talk about silver's too risky. Yes, silver is a riskier investment. It is. It's more volatile. There's more opportunity, but there's also more risk. It's like gold on steroids. It's a more exaggeration or exaggerated form of gold. It hits higher highs and lower lows. If gold's up 10%, silver's going to rise 15%. But it's also for the downside. If gold falls 10%, silver's going to fall 15%. So you've got to be careful. Gold is a more stable monetary metal. Silver is a monetary metal, but it also, it's also an industrial metal. So it's the best of both worlds. If the economy is in bad shape and people invest in a safe haven, silver benefits, as we've seen. But when the economy recovers and the economy is in good shape, gold won't benefit, but silver will because silver is used in all these industrial applications that then technology starts flourishing and silver that's inside of intertwined in all this technology also will benefit. So silver is a win-win situation. It's definitely more, there's definitely more opportunity there. And that's why my name is Silver Slayer. And it's undervalued compared to gold. I mean, everything looking forwards only makes sense for silver. Yes, gold and silver are both, they, they both have, um, they, they both have reasons to invest. They both have pros and cons. You can fit $100,000 of gold in a shoebox. You can't do that with silver. So if someone's investing largely, think about it. Even if you have a safety deposit box, if you have a safe, safes are even, I mean, the, the bigger the safe, the more expensive it is. You'd have to use something or multiple safes. And that's not very convenient for silver stackers that like to keep their, their investment discreet and, and very hidden. So Gold definitely could could lower that or or make that more uh, accessible and convenient for you. So I'm going to wrap this video up here. I got more work to do today. Um, if you want a chance to enter my 34,000 subscriber giveaway, then go click the link in the description to my entry video or click the pinned comment. I appreciate you guys so much for reaching 34,000 subscribers. That's why I love doing giveaways like this. I love giving back um, because you guys support me so much. So I'm going to wrap this video up here. Like I said, the two links are in the description. This was Silver Slayer. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.